Hi, in this video you will learn how to write a quadratic function in vertex form from standard form. So please recall that vertex form and standard form are two of the three different representations of a quadratic function that we covered on the first day of class. Remember that vertex form is f of x or y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k and that this form most readily helps us identify the vertex as h, k. And also recall that standard form is the form we're used to looking at a quadratic function in, and that is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where c is our constant term, or our initial value, which is our y-intercept when graphed. So before we get started, we must understand that um, the function that we work with has to be in standard form. So I have a little note here for, uh, for you to remember to always be sure the function is in the form um, ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, sometimes you'll see it as y, as y equals and sometimes you'll see it as f of x. Either one's fine. But make sure you pause the video at any time so that you can re uh, write all this down in your notes. So I'm going to continue, and the first thing we're going to do is take a look at two different examples that are not in standard form so that we can be sure that we understand how to write it in standard form. If you take a look here at this first example, you should notice that it is actually in factored form. Well, if your objective is to write the quadratic function in vertex form, we first must begin by writing it in standard form. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, write it out in standard form by double distributing. Recall that we would multiply x times x and x times negative 4 and then 5 times x and 5 times negative 4. So that means if I ever give you one in vertex form the first thing you're going to need to do or excuse me in factored form rather is to multiply it out so that it is in standard form and then you can begin the process that you're going to learn today. The second example I have for you is one where we can see all the terms that we need in standard form however we recognize that while we have y on the left we also have x squared on the left of our equal sign and it needs to be on the opposite side so that we would be able to complete the square and solve or to write it in vertex form rather. So I'm going to move x squared to the opposite side by subtracting x squared from both sides. When we do that, we're left with y equals negative x squared minus x minus 1. And then we can get started. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and proceed at this point to take you through the process of learning how to complete the square. So the first example I have for you is one that is not in the correct form yet. So if you take a minute and think about what we have, we have y minus 16x equals x squared plus 71, where we do have the quadratic and the constant term on the correct side, but our linear term needs to be moved. So to move that to the opposite side, I am going to add 16x to both sides giving us y equals our quadratic term first, then our linear term plus 16x, then our constant term plus 71. It is now in a form that we, begin, we can begin to use to com learn to complete the square. So I have the steps written to the side, and if at any time you need to, go ahead and pause the video to write them down. So the very first step, it says, is to put parentheses around the quadratic and the linear terms. Remember that your quadratic term is the term with an exponent of 2, and our linear term is the term with an exponent of an understood 1. So that's our first step. Put parentheses around your quadratic and linear terms. Next, we are going to prepare to complete the square. To do this, this is just a slight variation on what you did yesterday with completing the square to solve. 
The difference here is we're only working on one side of our equation rather than both sides to solve for the x-intercept. Remember, our objective now is to get it into vertex form. So when we finish, it should look like this. Okay? So to prepare to complete the square, I have for you that you would want to make sure that you have um, a 1x squared and if you did not, we would factor that out. We'll get to one of those examples a little later. But the first thing we want to do is rewrite it so that we have in parentheses a quadratic term, a linear term, and then we need to leave space for a number that we're going to add in when we complete the square. So let's bring down our quadratic term, x squared. Bring down our linear term, plus 16x. And then we're going to leave a space for completing the square. So put plus blank. Close that off with parentheses. So as you can see, it should model this form here where we have a trinomial, three terms. Now, we're always going to maintain equivalence, so we can't forget about our constant term. This constant term should come down here and be just simply brought down as plus 71. Where this differs from solving by completing the square is if you recall with solving, if you added a number to the left side, you had to also add a number to the right side. Where this will differ is that if we add a number on the inside, which we always will, then we must subtract that number on the end. And the purpose of that is to maintain equivalency. So if you think about it right now, without these two terms, I still have the same thing we started with, x squared plus 16x plus 71. But if I add a number here, I'm changing the equation if I don't subtract it so that these two terms would zero out. They would cancel. Remember, we want to preserve equivalence here. So now we have completed step two. In step three, this should look familiar because you did this step when solving by completing the square. It says our next step is to take half of b and square it, placing it in both blanks. So recall that when completing the square by solving, we took our b value and divided by 2 and then squared it. We're going to do the same thing here. Here, our b value is 16. So I'm going to take half of 16 and square it. Well, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 squared is 64. Whatever number we find when we complete the square here, we will then subtract on the end. So let me just remind you, what we want to end up happening is that these terms here will cancel out so that we're not really changing the equation. We're just doing this process to help preserve form and actually be able to convert it to vertex form. All right, next, we're going to move on to step four. The fourth step is to factor this perfect square trinomial that we created. Recall that we've already done this yesterday when completing the square um, to solve. So I'm going to bring down my equation. But what I'm now going to do is recall that when you factor a perfect square trinomial, you get a binomial squared. Please recall that we know we have a perfect square trinomial if we can take the square root of the first term, which would be x, the square root of our constant here in our trinomial, which would be 8, multiply 8 times x, and then double it. So 8x doubled is 16x, so it fits our pattern. Since that is the case, we can factor it as a perfect square trinomial. Recall, when we factor a perfect square trinomial, we take the square root of the first term, keep the sign of our linear coefficient, and take the square root of our constant term in our trinomial. This gives us x plus 8. The last step would be to simplify um, this right here, this positive 71 minus 64. And 71 minus 64 is a positive 7. So it's not a hard process, but it does take a little bit to learn the steps. But if you take a look at what we have, 
you should now recognize that it is in the form where we have a quantity squared plus a number as we do with vertex form with our quantity squared plus a number. So I have one last step for you and it's really just a checking step. If we take a look at step 5, remember to pause it at any time so that you can write it down. Step 5 says to verify that your standard form, which was this here, and our vertex form, which is here, are equivalent. Remember equivalent means equal in value. So we want to type our standard form and our vertex form into y1 and y2 on the calculator and then check the table to verify that they are equivalent. So let's try that. So in my calculator, I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to type in standard form. And then I'm going to type in vertex form. Then hit second graph, and if you take a look at your table, you can see that all your input, uh, for each input, your output values are the same. And that's exactly what you want. That tells you that your answer is correct. So now we know that this standard form in vertex form is y equals x plus 8 quantity squared plus 7. So this is your objective, is to be able to go from standard form to vertex form with these steps. All right, let's do a couple more examples to help drive it home. So the next one I have for you is y equals x squared minus 2x minus 5. So recall that your first steps are to put parentheses around your quadratic and linear terms. Your second step is to prepare to complete the square by leaving space for a constant term within a trinomial and bringing your constant term down. The next step is to take half of b and square it. And please don't worry about the sign of your linear term. Even though it is negative 2, when we square it, it's always going to turn positive. So half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared means negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And of course, actually I forgot my minus blank over here. Since we added in 1 here to keep it equivalent, remember we have all the same terms we started with, if I add in 1 to keep it equivalent, I have to subtract 1. The next step is to factor. So we want to take the square root, keep the sign, square root, x minus 1 quantity squared, and then simply simplify your integers out here. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. So you can see that once you learn the steps, it's actually a relatively short process. So I'm going to verify that my answer is correct again. x squared minus 2x minus 5. Oops, let me fix that. And then the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 6. See how my y1 and y2s match up? That tells me I did a good job. So in less than a minute's time, you should be able to convert one from standard to vertex. So these are relatively simple ones where it didn't appear uh, to hard and didn't give you anything too difficult. But now let's go back to example, one of the examples that we started off with at the beginning where we were simply putting it in standard form. So this goes back to, nope, that's probably slightly different. If we take a look at this one, when we put it in standard form, remember that's always your goal. You can't even get started until it's in standard form. We would have x squared plus 9x plus 20. First step, parentheses, and prepare to complete the square.
So add a number here, subtract a number here. What's different about this one is when we take half of b and square it, we don't have an integer. But the steps are not any different. So we're going to take half of b, which is 9, and square it. But that means in parent I'm going to do it in my calculator. So I'll type parentheses, half of 9 squared, just like that. I'm going to get a decimal, but just hit math, enter, enter, and that will convert it to a fraction. This is the number we should add into our blanks. So we're going to use 81 fourths. So 81 over 4, 81 over 4. Our next step is to factor our perfect square trinomial. Don't think it's difficult. Same step applies. Square root, keep the sign, square root. Leaving us with x plus, and don't fret about this. If you want to use your calculator, but really you created a perfect square trinomial, which means you should be able to take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom because they're perfect squares. So the square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 4 is 2. So we have x plus 9 halves quantity squared. And then for this number here, we're almost done. We just need to type that in our calculator. So let's do 20 minus 81 fourths. And then math, enter, enter. And our value is negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 over 4. So if I ask you to state the vertex, remember we just switch keep when finding the vertex in um, vertex form. So that means our vertex would be negative 9 halves and positive, excuse me, negative 1 fourth. We switch the sign of what's in parentheses. We keep the sign of what's not in parentheses. So this is our vertex form. Let's verify that it's correct. We can even go back here and type in our factored form. And then type in our vertex form. And if those are equivalent, then our y1s and our y2s match up. Okay. Since this video is already at 17 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this. But we do need to do another example where our coefficient is not um, 1. And I'll do another short video for that.